It's Friday again, and once more we focus on Choco Love, and this might just be in my top 5 favorite episodes of the show thus far. This is my review of episode 20 of Shaman King. The fight with Peyote and Boss continues to raise the stakes as Chocola finds himself in a morally compromising position, not wanting to kill his opponents, but seeing his hand forced. Welcome to another Shaman King review. It's Friday, it's a good day to be a Shaman King fan, so I want to know all your thoughts on the show, on this latest episode. Throw them all down there, start the conversation because it's always the most important part. And while you're down there, if this is the first video clicked on to see from me thank you so much first and foremost it means the world to me that you would click and give this a watch why don't you consider clicking the subscribe button if you enjoy what you see if you want to see more from it and to join a beautiful shaman king fan community and a film fan community so this episode starts pretty much by establishing motivations for our two main characters in this episode, Peyote and Chocolove. And Peyote has got this really interesting power because he's a bone shaman. He controls bones, uses that as his medium, which is such a creepy and sinister notion. Even Faust is creeped out and disgusted disgusted by him at certain points because he's actually using living beings as his medium. He eventually summons these Caravella, Calavera dolls? Calavera dolls. Because they say two R's instead of L's, Calavera dolls is the name. <laughs> Which is really interesting because it dives into the Mexican culture of the Day of the Dead and why those dolls are even a thing to begin with and Peyote has now depraved the significance of those dolls to Mexican culture. But then the episode takes a turn. Why is Chocolove so paralyzed by this notion that he has to possibly kill someone else to win this match and to advance in the tournament? And we dive into Chocolove's backstory. Story, which in the previous anime we saw a little bit of. We saw that he had a relationship with an old man who was also a traveling comedian that got him into being a comedian himself, that passed on Mick to Chocolove. But this episode does such a tragic, beautiful job at showing us where Chocolove came from. His life was never the same after a certain Christmas evening in 1989 if my counting is correct because we have a flashback to 98 and then they mentioned that nine years before that so 89 <laughs> Chokolov's parents were murdered by a robber in a home invasion situation on Christmas Eve and since then Chokolov gave in to anger and he allowed anger to define him and to guide his life. He became a member of a gang. He killed a person himself on a Christmas Eve. And soon enough, he meets this old man who's saying these horrible jokes. They are not funny at all, but he wants to save the world with laughter. And Chokolov sees value in this. He finally laughs once again for all we know ever since his parents were murdered. And the way the story unravels with the relationship between these two as he starts his shamanic training, as he gets Mick from the old man, but soon enough Shaft, his old gang, and a cool reference to all the movies that are named Shaft, there are way too many of those. <laughs> they find Chocolove soon enough as they want him back in the gang as Chocolove was the most ruthless and best killer amongst them and they kill the old man. And how Chocolove decides to go about this, by the guidance of this old shaman that came from the Amazon tribes and found a way to spread the joy of laughter and try to save the world through joy, through understanding, not with anger, not with attacking each other, but trying to live in harmony with anyone. And Chocolove follows this advice and we soon enough find out that his gang members are now supporters of him. They basically embraced the tribal culture where the old man came from, even though they cannot see the ghosts, even though they cannot see the spirits, they're there to support Chokolov because he converted them through harmony, peace, and joy. And I think that's fucking beautiful, man. I am officially a Chokolov stan after this episode. I thought they did a 
brilliant job at portraying important themes and developing character through those themes, pushing the story forward and Chocolove unleashes his most powerful attack on Peyote, which is a joke. A layer joke with double meanings and whatnot that doesn't necessarily end up being funny for me, but the significance of it thematically to the episode is beautiful. Boz starts to laugh, the Calavera dolls start to laugh, and soon enough, Peyote is defeated when Ren comes in and Basson just punches Peyote out of the ring and Team the Ren officially wins. I love this. Not only does Chocolove win my respect, clearly from the episode, he won everyone's respect. Horohoro, Renz, Yoz, everyone. I think this episode is so well done. It talks about some important stuff, but it keeps furthering those themes, much like our main character Yo himself really believes in that fighting doesn't get shit done, man. It's peace, it's through compromise, through understanding, through talking to one another, and spreading joy. I love this. I really fucking love this episode, man. I I almost teared up at points. I almost teared up when we saw the old man dying, when we saw Chocolove getting his messages and understanding his lessons. It's it's beautiful. I I really was surprised. But Ren being Ren, of course, ends the episode by declaring war on Yo and announcing that Team the Ren would win this tournament and get to the Great Spirit. And Ren's family is all there and they even got a massive gathering of all the corpses they're controlling. <laughs> they're there to serve as a crowd. They're all supporting Ren and Ren's just super embarrassed. But that's not where the episode ends because soon enough, the X-Laws are here, their Iron Maiden is here in her big fucking coffin thing, whatever you want to call it, and Lyserg is now officially a member with the X-Laws, and apparently, at least I understood it that way, their match is next. I also really love that the voice actor for Lyserg is doing something different now. Now that he is a member of the Axlons, he is interpreting this character in a different way. I really appreciate that commitment on his part. And there is poor Morphine, who's going to get abandoned, and I fucking hate Lyser for abandoning her, because she's the cutest, she's awesome, I love Morphine. This week's Shaman King is just top-notch in every way. It has the laughs, it has the emotion, it has really cool action. It allows many people to shine through character, advancing the story. Just no complaints here, man. Just really, really fascinating 20 minutes of television. And so those are my thoughts on this week's Shaman King, but I want to know what you think. So throw it all down there in the comments below. The ups, the downs, the positives, the negatives. What you enjoy, what you didn't enjoy, what do you expect to see next week? Is next week the first match of Lizard with the X-Laws versus someone else? I don't know who it is. Thank you so much for watching. You are the best. Stay tuned for many more reviews to come very soon. I will be having my review for Shang-Chi and the Legend of Ten Rings later on here today. And I hope to see you there. And so until the next one, love each other and love the movies.